Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of an email server video series. In this video, the fifth bonus video in the series, we continue our work on setting up virtual mailboxes by looking at the Dovecot side of the picture. So we've managed to sort out Postfix for virtual mailboxes. And of course, we've set up SNI in both Postfix and Dovecot already. So this is really the final configuration section of this setup process. So let's head over to my desktop and get cracking straight away as we all know what the score is here. But of course, before I do, just a quick reminder of my Patreon account. If you'd like to receive one-to-one -one support, access videos early, or just contribute to my work, please do check out my Patreon account. Okay, great, thanks. Let's crack on. Right, so here we are on my desktop as normal. I'm going to SSH into my Raspberry Pi remotely as usual with my SSH alias Pi4, so SSH Pi4, all rather standard. Um, clear my screen, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, it depends how I'm feeling. Okay, so next then, let's set up Dovecot so that our IMAP server, the server which provides access to the emails for email clients, knows where our new virtual mailboxes are located and is also made responsible for managing the authentication of users, taking that responsibility away from using the default Linux accounts. So of course, previously we were authenticating our email accounts using our Linux user accounts. We need to take that away now and make it a separate process, which Dovecot is going to manage. And as mentioned, of course, we do need to tell Dovecot where our virtual mailboxes are. So this is first achieved in the Dovecot authentication file by enabling an extension file to be used. So we're going to go into the auth comp file of Dovecot first and make a small change. So type as I type, sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash Dovecot, which is where Dovecot is installed, conf d, which is where the configuration files are located for Dovecot, and then 10 hyphen auth.conf. Okay, so this is the file that we're going to be editing in this case. Press enter. Okay, now we need to go right down to the bottom of this file where the extension files are included. And we need to make sure that the line authpasswdfile.conf.ext is uncommented because we're going to be using that to tell Dovecot where it can go to find the authentication information for our virtual mailboxes. Okay, so let's go to the very bottom. I'm using page down to go down quite quickly. And if I get my cursor, I'm just going to show you where, where I mean. Oh, it's worth mentioning, actually, in Dovecot, there are a number, particularly Dovecot, uh, the recent versions of Dovecot, um, they have a lot of these extension files that you can uncomment depending on what you're doing with it. And one of them is this one, the authpasswdfile.conf.ext, which I just mentioned. Now, as I'm showing you a working email server, um, you can see I already have it uncommented. So you need to make sure this file is uncommented in your configuration file. Now, all of these configuration files are extendable. So you can, un you can comment them back in, uncomment them basically, and then go to that file and make changes if you wish. So for example, if we were using a SQL database to manage our users, we're not, but it is a valid way of using Postfix and Dovecot. Um, if you were doing that, then this file would need to be uncommented and you would need to make some changes in there so that Dovecot knows how to access the content of the database. But we're not doing it with a database. Um, I'm doing it using um, a password file, which we'll talk about shortly. So we're going to just uncomment this to make sure that Dovecot reads that in when it, uh, when it starts up. Okay, so let's save and exit that. Okay, so make that change and come out. So now let's edit that file that we've just uncommented to, um, to set it appropriately so that we point Dovecot towards the location of the mailboxes. So type as I type to get to that file, sudo nano slash etc slash Dovecot as normal, conf d again as normal. You can use tab to accelerate this process and then auth hyphen pass wd file and then again, you could use tab to complete it. So this is the file that we want to edit here. So press enter, there we go. 
So in here, we want to make sure we define the location of the user DB and pass DB parameters. The user DB, excuse me, the user DB parameter is the definition for the location of the user's mail directory. So where the mail will go. And pass DB is the location of a file containing email addresses and their associated passwords. So that's the file that Dovecot will go to to retrieve the password for the user account, for the email account. So you can see here in this example on the screen, I have already uh, configured this file. As I've mentioned, this is a working email server. So let's run through what's in here as it's important to understand. So we've got this section firstly, the pass w, uh, sorry, the pass db uh, parameter. So this is pointing towards a file uh, called pass wd just here. That's what it's pointing towards. And we're telling it it's a pass wd file. So it's going to use a driver to read it called pass wd hyphen file. Okay. Now we haven't created this file yet but we're going to shortly. It is this file which is telling Dovecot what the passwords are for each email account. Okay, so that's pass, pass DB. And then user DB. So this parameter is telling Dovecot two things. It is telling it what the user account is, which is responsible for the virtual mailboxes. So that's the first thing and that's here. Okay, and you'll rec recognize Vmail um, from before. So basically what user owns the mail directories so that Dovecot can use that user for working with the files and directories. Okay, once that's done in this part, we've then got this part. Okay, now this is telling um, uh, Dovecot what format the user's home directories uh, are stored in. So this second point is crucially important. It is here. Um, and it is only one of two places where this is defined in which we tell Dovecot this is the structure of our uh, virtual mailbox direct, um, uh, yeah, directory structure. So we're showing Dovecot how to pass the path and extract the domain and username from it, thus telling Dovecot what users and domains there are on the system. So if you remember, our virtual mailboxes are located in home, vmail, and then domain, and then username. And this is telling Dovecot, this is how you get this information out of this path. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Um, oh, I should mention, uh, I knew there was something. If you remember, uh, in a previous video, I mentioned that the domain followed by the user in the path to the virtual mailboxes, like this here, uh, is a design choice. Well, it is a design choice. It doesn't have to be like this. And it's only here and in one other place that we'll see shortly in this video where this is defined in Dovecot. So if you ever decide to change how this is done, you can do so. It's here and in one other place. That's all. However, this is a good design choice. I recommend you stick with it. Uh, but nonetheless, it is a design choice. So you can change it if you wish. OK, so with that covered, make sure your file looks like this and then save it and exit from your text editor, which I will do now. So now we need to create the file, which is telling Dovecot what the passwords are for each domain, which we pointed it to uh, in the previous file that we've just exited. So let's create that password file, which Dovecot is pointing to, and populate it with passwords for the users on our system. So type as I type sudo nano as always etc dovecot and then instead of conf.d we're not going into the configuration directory we're going to create a file or we're going to open a file called pass wd so you'll recognize uh, this path this is the path that was in the file we've just exited it was the path that was in here this is where we're going to be storing our email address to password associations so press enter here in we go OK, so here you can see that we have entries already created for the four users I'm showing off in this demo. We've got Fred, Bob and info for two separate domains. The format of this file has to be quite specific. So let's run through uh, one of the lines carefully to make sure it's fully understood. So we start with the email address on the first line, let's say, for example. 
So in this case, info at single-entity.com. So this is just the email address. We then follow that by a colon followed by the password. I'll be showing you how you generate the password shortly, but just note that each piece of information is separated by a colon. So email first, then colon, then password. Then after that, we have six colons, six in all. So these six colons are there because you can pass much more information into this file and create a more custom setup. But in our case, we just want the email address and password to allow Dovecot to authenticate our email accounts. So make sure you have email address, colon, password, and then six colons afterwards, just here, and you'll be set up correctly. Okay, now, as you don't have passwords yet, I recommend you populate this file just with your email address for all of the accounts that you're hosting, and then finish off each line with seven colons for now, because we'll be coming back and populating the passwords in just a minute. Okay, so with that done, you save the file and exit from your text editor. So now let's create the passwords. Thankfully, Dovecot has an admin tool which we can use for this. So type as I type, uh, sudo dov adm for admin space and then just pw. So dov adm and then just a space and pw. And then you'll enter the password. Now this is a pa <coughs> excuse me. This is a password for a particular user. So it you know this for example could be info at singleentity.com for example. So I'll just type in maybe I don't know type something random in. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then I'll get the string out the other side. So you may recognize this string. This is the password you need to substitute into the passwd text file that we just exited after the email address. So for each of your users, use the dovadm uh, tool with password uh, to create new passwords for each of your users. Type them in, get your string out, your hash string, and then paste it into your um, passwd file after the first colon. Okay, once you're done, of course, exit your text file and you have now fully set up um, your passwd file ready to go. Okay, great. So with your passwd file complete, we're almost done. The last stage is to tell Dovecot where the mail directory is located. To do that, we edit the mail configuration file. So type as I type, sudo nano slash etc, dovecot, we've all been here before, so we can rattle through this, conf d, so we know to go there for any dovecot configuration file. And then we're editing the mail configuration file, which is prepended with a 10. Don't forget, I mentioned in the previous video that these numbers refer to the order in which the configuration files are read. So that might be useful for you to know, um, but that's the reason they have a number in front of them. Okay, now this file exists by default in your Dovecot installation, but it won't look like this as I've got it because I've had mine, well, I've modified mine. So we're telling Dovecot in this case with these two lines, and these two are the lines that you need to modify. We're telling Dovecot with these two lines that the user's home and mail directories are the same, and they are located at home, vmail, domain, and then user. Okay. I'm sure you'll recognize this. We, we had it earlier on in this video, percent %d and percent %n, where percent %d represents domain and percent %n represents the uh, user part of the uh, username and email address. Sorry, the, the, the username and domain. So we've separated the two out. And this is how uh, Dovecot will be able to pass the paths and understand where to go. So make sure that these two lines exist in this file uncommented and look exactly like this if you're using the same pattern or the same design choice as I am, which is home, vmail, domain, username. If you are, just make sure it matches. So once done, save your file and exit from Nano as normal. Oh, one thing I'll mention just before I do, sorry, it just caught my eye just here. I haven't mentioned it. The mail location line includes mail dear followed by a colon. 
Now this gives dovecots a little bit more information and it's quite important. You may recall that in some of the files, uh, sorry, in some of the configuration lines that we've defined previously, there was a word hash here followed by a colon. And this was telling dovecot that the file was a hash file and you'll be looking for a .db version. In this case, what this extra piece of information is doing is it's telling dovecot that we're using mail deer formatting. So you must make sure you've got mail deer followed by colon, followed by the path. Okay, so again, exit, save and exit. Um, now, as with all changes to our email server configuration, we should now restart the services, just to be sure. So we'll restart both Postfix and Dovecot at the same time here. So sudo service restart Postfix. I mean, you only really need to restart Dovecot, but sometimes I just feel better if I do both. So I'm going to separate the commands with a semicolon here. This is um, basically valid shell uh, syntax to uh, execute multiple commands at the same time. And then sudo service restart Dovecot. Okay, so I'm going to do both at the same time. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's why, yeah. Okay, should always practice my videos before doing them. That's because restart isn't a service. Uh, it should be sudo service postfix restart sudo <coughs> service dovecot restart. My apologies. There we go. That's better. A small pause whilst the system brings both of those services back online. And then of course, whenever you've restarted these services, you nearly always want to go back and have a quick check of their status. So pressing up on the keyboard <coughs> and then replacing restart with status, we can get the status for both of these services together. Excellent. So both are active and running, which we can see by the green active uh, status. So if you have the same thing that I've got, you should be all ready to go. And we're done. So that's it for this video. Uh, in the next bonus video in this series, we'll be looking at updating our Postfix and Dovecot configuration to make sure all of our domains still pass the rigorous requirements for our server to be considered legitimate. So don't forget, you have to be very careful to make sure domains and indeed the emails being sent by a domain are considered legitimate. And we've made some serious changes now to our Dovecot and Postfix configuration. And we need to now go back basically to earlier videos, but we won't be doing that, we'll be doing it again very quickly. Um, we need to go back and check that all of our work we've done before is still valid and updated accordingly with our new domain or domains, okay? So that's what we'll be doing and we'll also be testing the system via Thunderbird just to show that when this is all up and running and sorted, we're still getting 10 out of 10 on our mail tester service or the mail tester service, I should say and we're able to send and receive emails correctly across more than one domain on the same IP address, which is ultimately the objective. Then, looking ahead to the final video, we'll be looking at the process of creating new users, and we'll be showing you how to go about debugging Postfix and Dovecot yourself to help you suss out any problems you have along the way. Okay, I do hope you found this useful. If you have, please do like and subscribe. Check out my Patreon account if you're interested or want to see videos early, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.